this is what a stem and leaf plot looks like. We have a couple of sides to it. We have on the left here the stem and on the right the leaf. And what this represents is the first part, the stem, the bulk of the number, and over here the leaf, the, the bit that's tacked on. And what I mean by that is, for example, this one and then a bar and then three. So one bar three represents the number 13. So our stem numbers are the number in the tens column and our leaf numbers are the number in the uh, ones column, if you will. One bar five means 15. Four bar two means 42. Four bar six means 46. So this number here is 34. This number here is 35. This number here is 37. This one would be 18. And that's the basics of a stem and leaf plot. One of the reasons that stem plots are useful is because they don't take away the original data. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Here is a table um, of data that we had in one of the questions in a previous video. And here we constructed a frequency uh, table using that data. But what's been lost in breaking this down into a frequency table is some of the original information. For example, looking at this, if I just had this frequency table and I didn't have the original data, I said, what was the shortest person in this group? Well, we don't know. He was. There were two people who fell somewhere between 145 and 149, but I couldn't tell you exactly who the shortest person was or what their height was. Um, if I said who was the tallest, again, I can't, I can't tell you. If I said how many times did the height 167 occur, you couldn't tell me. You know that there were five occurrences somewhere in the range 165 to 169, but I don't know exactly how many times 167 centimetres occurred, for example. And that's where a stem and leaf plot can be quite useful because it preserves the original data, so to speak. So here's that table again, but now I'm going to construct a stem and leaf plot to represent it. Now, in the last example, I used one digit as the stem. I used one, two, three, four. In this example, if I used the first digit, which is just a one, um, if you notice, all of these data points have one as their first digit. So it wouldn't really help me construct much of a stem and leaf plot because there'd only be one stem and then all the leaves would come off that which wouldn't be very um, helpful, really. So what I'm going to do here instead is take the first two digits of these numbers and make them into my stem. So I've got some 1, 4 numbers, some 1, 5, 1, 6, and up to 1, 8 numbers. So those are going to be my stems. So we have 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, and 1, 8. Now for the leaf part, this one up here, 145, is a 1, 4, and then a 5. So I just need to put the 5 part there as the leaf. This next one, 170, is a 1, 7, and then a 0. So next to the 1, 7 stem, I just put a 0 as the leaf. Same for 160, I go 1, 6, and then a 0. Same for 175, this one here, I have a 1, 7, and then I put a 5. And there's the rest of those that I've now filled out. Now what I've created here is an unordered stem plot. And what it means unordered is just that these leaf parts here, the leaves, they're not in order. 5, 9 happens to be, but this sequence here, 7, 1, 9, 7, 5, 9, that's not in order. For me to arrange those in order from lowest number to highest number, it would go 1, then 5, then 7, and 7, and then 9, 9. So now I'm going to rearrange this stem and leaf plot so that it's ordered, because then I can get the information that I want out of it much quicker. So I'll just redraw my stems, and now I'm going to put the leaves back in, but in order. So this one here is already in order. 5 comes before 9, so that makes sense. 5 and then 9. For this one, as I said, we go 1 is the lowest number, followed by 5, and then we have the two sevens and the two nines. So it goes 1, 5, 7, 7, 9. For the next one here, the lowest number is 0, then the next one is 1, etc. And there it is completed. Now what I have here is an ordered stem plot because the numbers of the leaves are in order. And I can gather some information really quickly about uh, my data looking at this ordered stem plot. 
For example, if I wanted to know how tall was the shortest person in this group, I can look really quickly off this list and say, well, he was 145 centimetres because 14 bar 5 equals 145 centimetres. And the tallest person, I would just read that off. I'd look at this last number here on my stem, which means it's the highest, on my leaf rather, meaning it's the highest. And I have 18 bar 7, which means 187 centimetres was the tallest person. We can also figure out the median, the range, and some other statistics um, much quicker now that I've got this arranged in an ordered stem plot. And I'll show you that in a later video. So here is another group of data. Um, hit pause on the video, have a look at these numbers and see if you can put together a stem and leaf plot. Okay, so the first step here is going to be to work out what we should use as our stems. Now, I'm not going to use two digits for this one because each of these numbers is only two, digit, two digits long. So my stem is just going to be one number. And it looks like the lowest number that you should start off with, this three here, if you're thinking of it as a two digit number, so something I can have as the stem and then the leaf, the stem would be zero because there's nothing in the tens column. So then I would have one, two, three, four, and do any numbers start with five? Yes, here we go. Five, do I need a six? No, five is the highest number. So that's my stem. And then what are my leaves going to be? Okay, well, I have a 0, 3 over here, and I have a 0, 2, and a 0, 4 there, and a 3, and a 6, and that's it. So now I'm on to the 1s. I've got a 1, 7 there, and a 1, 9 there, another 1, 7, and that's it. So I'm onto the twos. I've got a two eight there, and a two four, and another two four, and that's it. Onto the threes. There's a three five, three one, a two, and a three, and another one, and a two six, and a three, and a one and so on and there it is completed and the reason I crossed off these numbers as I went is because when I get to the end I might notice that I've missed something off so here I've missed the last one which is a 5-4 so I'll put that back on but I've also missed this which was early on which is a 1-6 so I can just put that on there because I haven't put this in order yet this stem plot so now that I've crossed that off I can double check that I put every number in my stem and leaf plot and the next step is to put it in order. So these numbers here, three, two, four, three, six, how do they go in order? It's gonna be two, three, three, four, six. So two, three, three, four, six. These ones here, seven, nine, seven, six. In order, they are six, seven, seven, nine. Eight, four, four will go four, four, eight. These ones here. And there that is completed. Now I will just note too, these should line up, but I've smushed some of these ones together because we're getting very close to the edge of the screen here. So the 264104 should all be in a line. And then the next one along 374, I really should have aligned this one over here and lining up with the 2 and the 8, etc. So that there are evenly, evenly spaced numbers going along the line. But just for the sake of getting it all into the screen here, my free hand is, is not perfectly aligned. And the last step is to put a legend. So something like 1 bar 6 equals 16 or uh, 5 bar 4 equals 54. Something that will uh, show the reader how to interpret your stem and leaf. Um, and if there was some sort of units on the data, for example, if this was centimetres or if it was, you know, uh, metres squared, something like that, you would put the units on here as well as part of your legend. Um, but our data was just numbers, so we don't need to put anything for this one. Sometimes you will see a back-to-back -back stem plot, which is just like any other stem plot, except we have two pieces of data going out either side. And this is what I mean. Here we have uh, two students, math students, and the results that they got on a series of weekly tests, for example. So 
Fred scored 77 this week and the same week Sarah scored 97. In the second week he scored 76 and she scored 96, etc, etc. So what are my stems going to be? Well it looks like the lowest number is a 6 and the highest number is a 9. So I'm going to put that in the middle as my stem, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm going to put a bar on either side, a line on either side, because what I'm going to do is have Fred's numbers coming out this way and Sarah's numbers coming out this way. And you could reverse those. It doesn't matter which side they're on. So Fred, did he have anything that started with a 6? Well, there was a 68 and there was a, another 68 and a 63. What about the 7s? We had a 77, a 76, 78, 74, 72, and that's it. And then there was an 81 and an 82. And nothing in the 9s. So we just leave that blank. If you have in a stem plot um, no particular occurrences for a particular um, stem, you just don't put any leaves for that line. Leaves, I should say. And co okay, so Sarah's results. She had a 97, a 96, an 87, a 66, 93, 68, 82, 90, so 90, 84, and 83. So this is exactly the same as the stem plot which goes in this direction except that I've drawn the leaf parts going out this way. Now this at the moment is unordered. The final step of this would be of course to put these in order. So this would say 388 eight, and this line here would say 24678 and this one is already in order but this line here coming out from the bar going that way this line here for example would say 2 and then three, and then four, and then seven. Because what you want to put closest to the stem is the lowest number. So this would be how I would order the eight line. And again, for the nine line, rather than putting them in order from left to right, you put them in order from the stem going away. So this here would be the zero closest, and then the three, and then the six, and then the seven. And one last thing you should always add to a stem plot if you've been asked to draw one is a legend. So just something that says, you know, 7 bar 7 equals 77 um, or any of these numbers. So 6 bar 8 equals 68, just so that um, someone reading it can interpret your stem plot.